Now that is looking good. This is a fancy build. I do like how it's all come together. Check this place out. Looking pretty fancy, right? I gotta say, this has turned out very good. And, uh, oh! Who's this fella? <laughs> Have you made your way out of there? Uh, that is that is quite the impressive trick. Maybe that has something to do with chunks unloading and loading and going through these blocks. That was an old thing once, wasn't it? <laughs> anyway, Houdini. That's what we're going to call you. Houdini. If I get a name tag, that's your name. Uh, yes, this is the design that I wanted to show you in the last episode and we didn't get around to building it because I ran out of time but now I have built it and it's looking pretty cool, right? But as we slowly look down with it, you can see more and more of it and then suddenly end rods everywhere because that was part of the original idea and I got about halfway through building this thing and I thought, oh, actually, do you know what? Not a big fan of these. I think they are too noisy is the problem. Like, we've got some darker paler colours here, and then BAM! The white pops out. The particle effects are great, but it's too much, it's too frequent. I think what we're going to do is whack all of those out and place them like that one there, just in the middle. Like, one per floor on each side, or or four, because the sides are four in total. Right? <laughs> anyway, this thing isn't finished yet. we got work to be done. End rod to be one of them. But, placing down the terracotta blocks, uh, believe it or not, took me a very long time to figure out how you do these. I got all the way to the top doing my last set of them and I finally figured out the technique for placing them. Put one down, turn to the side, put your second one, turn again, and you've placed it with the pattern, right? Pretty cool. Thing is, you can do that in any direction. <laughs> so I went up there like getting confused each time I was trying to build this and it turns out you just need to look forward, go to the side, you know, like that, and you've built your patterns. So at least the last ones got done reasonably fast. And I do like this uh, pattern here. The ones that I showed you in the creative world were were purple. And what we're going to do in our main part of our base here is go with the red and black. And then when you go into each of the corridors, there shall be purple. But let's focus on the task at hand. we got to finish the tower first of all. A few more things to do. The end rods, not really liking them. Not liking them at all. I think the trick here would be to actually place them on the underside of those blocks. So they are part of the wall facing downwards. Let's give that one a try and see how it looks. Oh yes, that is about a hundred times better. And still I think the end rod is maybe a little bit too bright for this build, but there are not too many options when it comes to lighting, and I think that looks pretty fantastic. But it also leaves us in a bit of a pickle, because I ran out of resources. We're going to need purple to finish building the tower here. We're going to need some water as well. We're also going to need more black concrete, and I've got 16 blocks left, which isn't good enough. So we've got to head back to the overworld and make ourselves some more concrete. Right, no more disappearing tricks, you. Do you know what? I'm very worried about him stepping into this portal. We are back in the overworld, and this contraption behind me ain't gonna stay looking janky for too long. As soon as I'm over here getting the itch to build, I wanna make this thing look cool. But uh, as of right now, we're gonna have to leave it bare bones. I've got another contraption that's gonna complement this one right here. For those of you who've been on the channel for some time may remember a while back we made a red sand converter tutorial. This was based on a contraption by Pi and Panda, and it's now relevant again because we can use it to convert the color of the sand. Uh, so we put a white one on this side over here, and I really should have just crafted a button for this. Why did I not do that? I've got stone in my inventory. Makes no sense, does it? <laughs> Throw that down there, and you might have seen it, but the sand that dropped was a black sand. Now, my thinking here, and I'm saying sand, I mean concrete powder, of course, is that dyes are kind of expensive. You're already throwing a load of materials into this, and actually, I should rephrase that, really. It's not terribly expensive. What is it? One for eight of them, but the thing is... Ink sacks, I don't have a farm for that, and I keep buying them from the shop, so I'm thinking, how can I save myself money? And what about other dyes that you might find it a little hard to come by? So, something like bone meal is really easily farmable, and uh, we can, we can, yeah, use this contraption to convert it into a different colour. You can see it's now black, so you put the colour you want on one side, put this thing on the other. I wonder what would happen if we were to put sand over there. Okay, it's time for an experiment. Uh, ah, it sort of zapped me back round, but it looked like the white block fell down. Yes, so it doesn't work with sand, which is fine. Although if you put red sand there, it will turn it into yellow. If you put red sand on this side and yellow on that, it will turn the yellow into red. So this thing is still working, still useful. I'll put a link to the tutorial in the description box if you're interested in it. And what we're going to do right now is automate it. We need to make it a little easier to use. 
So this is AFK a ball, however there seems to be something slightly different with the redstone here. In the video in the tutorial, when I built this contraption before by the way, all you need is this right here and this piece of redstone will be activated. But it's not happening at the moment and the instructions are to put one non-stackable item in there. Doesn't seem quite right to me, that's not the way this game works. So anyway, if we just break that and place it again, it doesn't activate the circuit down there. So let's do that and then it does activate it. Anyway, this is a spot for the player to stand AFK, so you'd put your concrete into here, or your powdered concrete, and it will get dispensed by the dropper. There's a chest up here so you can have a whole bunch of it, and then all you've got to do is stand right here, hold down right click, and bam, it does things automatically for you. And it puts it into your inventory, so you keep placing it. And then you can go AFK and, uh, and convert loads of the stuff, nice and easy. And then you've got to find a way down here to the chest at the bottom, which is always a little bit of a pain, to be fair. But there you go, so now we've got an automatic converting contraption set up. That means I can get tons and tons of the powder that I need to build the last part of the tower without actually having to use any dye. Well, that has saved us a reasonable amount of ink sacks, and we're going to put all this black concrete to use as we're going to put some pillars on the outside of this build. There's going to be four of them in total, so we've got two in the middle, one on the outside, and one on the outside on this side and they're going to give a little bit of structure to these blocks because they're kind of sticking out at the moment so we're going to have some pillars that go up and make them look like they're part of a structure because we are going to see this from the outside as well as the inside when we go into each of our different I don't know what we're going to call these like I'll probably use a different word every single time but let's say for now different areas then you can look back and see the tower to get here. So anyway, those pillars are going to go up, but there's also going to be a purple one at the back. Now from the inside, you're not really going to see the purple as much as the outside, because we're going to put water flowing down to this spot right here through the middle. And I made a water source, by the way. Pro tip for you, always make it a 2x2, two two, then it doesn't matter which one you grab the water from, it just regenerates like that. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm one impatient chappy when it comes to Minecraft. Always itching to log on here and play. And I've just been reading the comments on the last episode. And I'm like, oh no, I've done it again. So many of you pointing out that I can just put the water down after I place the powdered concrete for building. And then it would turn into the block that we want there. Which is like really quite clever. So well done for all of you for suggesting that. I couldn't think of it, man. I wasn't using my head. But what's really ironic is that we're actually dropping water into our structure and it's going to stay there, but it would do the job perfectly. And I was about to just, you know, slap this down here, which would be a very bad way to go about doing it, because we've got a little bit more construction here. So this is what the top of the building looks like, and actually they're not supposed to go there. Let's break those blocks. I also got a lot of comments from people saying, why don't you just use lighting to stop the Enderman spawning? And really great idea, but it's not quite what I was trying to achieve, and I think I've actually failed to achieve what I wanted to do, right? I didn't want Enderman anywhere in our base at all, and that's because Enderman can teleport, so I kind of wanted to make spaces where they couldn't get to, but, you know, they can teleport to glass and stand on top of there. Or can they teleport to glass? I'm pretty sure they can do that, right? I don't know. <laughs> I can never remember all these obscure facts there are to remember in this game, right? There's a lot of stuff to know about Minecraft. Um, but yeah, so because of that, I've sort of been led to this idea that what I should do is uh, like block the spawning you know by making everywhere too high or put slabs there but I think they can even teleport onto a slab so it doesn't really work does it and I kinda planned on building an enderman farm around here so we could go somewhere for XP when we needed it right and that we'd have ender pearls here so that might not work out I don't know what's gonna happen anyway if we place this here I do know what's gonna happen the water's gonna go straight down and it's not gonna flow out in front of itself we should also step back because that's gonna look really cool Except we kind of missed it. <laughs> that wasn't very good, was it? Well, let's do another one. I've changed the top of this, by the way. You may have noticed that's a too high gap, so no Enderman can spawn in there. And then the idea was to plaster this with carpets, but we're sort of changing the idea here as we can stop Enderman spawning here, but even if we stop them teleporting, there's going to be so many places that they can teleport to. So I'm going to have to rethink my idea about creating an Enderman farm in this area. And I did it again. I didn't drop down and watch the water flow down. That's what I wanted to do. Oh, It looks pretty cool anyway, I think. It's another colour thrown in the palette, though. So now you've got red, blue, and a little bit of purple at the top. But the purple isn't too obvious. Uh, that, though, is going to have to go. And I'm thinking what we might do is have, like, four of them at the top here. 
to think. I've already made these blocks, placed them down, put water next to them, and then pick them up again. Just to do the same thing, just to place them down and put some more water with them. So silly, I know. So when we come through this portal, it's probably going to put us up on the roof at the moment, isn't it? So we should uh, break these fences and probably break this down below as well. I mean, if it's like that, something will spawn in it. But we'll break that one and we'll put a carpet on top of uh, there for now. So let's plop ourselves through the portal. And Houdini, are you trying to escape again? I was wondering where this... Hey, you ain't going anywhere, my friend, uh, except through this portal. Don't try and run away. We're going to nudge you in. I did wonder where he went to. I thought he might have died. No, he's trying to escape. <laughs> Excellent. All right, so that guy's gone through. I'm going to go through. It's going to put me where... No, no, this is a bad place for us to be, man. It is a bad place. Uh, <laughs> I guess you're staying up there for now. Oh. I've decided to move the entire beacon down by one block. That is a pretty cool sight. <laughs> that is a really cool sight. And the reason I decided to move it down is purely for looks. So, black full ore, and the beacon's in it. You can't see the ugly iron anymore. But what we're going to do is uh, slap that right there so we get a black beacon beam through the middle. That's cool. That's far less evasive, I think, on the eyes now. And uh, the reason it's going to be a panel like that is so you can open up... Hey, wait, what? Oh, no, don't tell me because it connects on all sides. Of course, it makes a full hitbox. Ah, oh, I thought I was being smart. Well, it was a good idea, but unfortunately it didn't work. So we are done in the end for now, and if you haven't seen the prank that Tango did on Iskow, spoiler alert, this was one amazing prank, and I just flew by and saw it, and it reminded me of the other day when I flew by and landed on the top of it. If you've seen the prank, you'll know why that probably gave Tango a heart attack, because it's activated by things landing on the top of it. Uh, look at this. The aftermath is pretty crazy, and I was just flying past here, and my frames absolutely tanked. Look at all of those anvils. Whoa, here we go. Lag spikes, lag spikes, lag spikes. Yes. So many anvils. Absolutely crazy. It's one of the best pranks I think I've seen in a long, long time. So Tango, if you're watching, GG, buddy. GG. After all the effort we put into this lovely contraption, I've had my dreams shattered. So many of you pointed out an alternative way to do this. Here's a mini tutorial for you. You want to place blocks like this, put them back there, over there, some of them, some of that and then throw down your water, and then stand at the front here and put this in your offhand, right? So let's swap it over, and then grab your pick and hold down right click and hold down left click at the same time. And that is the same thing done <laughs> an insane amount of times faster. And now that I'm actually here doing it myself after reading about it, I've got to say uh, that is, you know, clearly a much better way of doing things. Wow, that's slightly hypnotic. <laughs> Uh, then that happened. I think we might need some obsidian with this contraption. And I was just wondering, did any of them go down into that space, like the items when they pop off? You probably want a couple of hoppers around here as well. This is a cool idea. We're going to refine it a little bit, and we're going to include it in this build as well. So you've got the option of using that or that, which a moment ago seemed like a really cool idea, and now it feels like I'm never going to use that. I'm just going to go with this one over here. I've torn it down, I know, it's sad to see it go, but we're not going to use it ever again really, and I doubt anyone else would with this other method. 
And by the way, I was thinking it's kind of a blessing that we're next to Tango's Cocoa Bean Farm over here. Because we get loads of cocoa beans, right? But uh, turns out I went to get some more hardened clay and I've actually got a big old stash of brown clay. Which is great because we're using the brown terracotta and we're going to use a lot of brown and grey blocks over here with hardened clay as well. So I'll come up with a little build theme that looks pretty cool. Which I think takes good advantage of what's available to us with these new terracotta blocks. So let's put a grey block above that. We're going to have some spruce at the top and bottom to add a little bit of shape. And then behind here is where we put the terracotta. Now, if I remember correctly, uh, you start off with... Hang on, we're going to put some temporary blocks underneath here because it needs to go a little bit higher. Is it that direction? Yeah, looks like I've done it completely wrong. <laughs> yep, let's try again. I think it's like that. Aha! And that one would go there, and then this one would face across, and... Excellent. So we've got that little pattern in there, which looks alright. I know, it's looking okay, it's cool. But then we're going to throw down some grey, like this, and it's going to go across the top. And then we're going to create like this 3D modern build style effect across the top here. And this will basically be the premise for the build. These three or four different blocks together. And then you've got like an opening here as well, actually. So if we put some blocks there and that colour as well on the inside... Remove that, then it kind of hides up that little gap. And that's looking pretty cool, I think. So what we're going to do is have that, have an entrance, then have the same thing again mirrored. So it's probably going to be about that wide, which should give us enough space on the inside to put this thing in and the other one as well. So it's only going to be big enough just to house a couple of contraptions. Oh man, so far it is looking great. And sometimes, sometimes coming up with a good build in Minecraft is quite simple. You know, this came to mind quite quickly because I just went for materials that complement each other, you know, these different shades of brown. And speaking of shades of brown, we're going to throw some down around the bottom here. And oh my god, does that look cool, right? It almost looks like dirt. In fact, if you threw some dirt in there as well, oh, that looks really nice. Uh, it would definitely go in, the dirt that is. And yeah, we're going to have a block trim of one like that. So then there'll be this bit and that wouldn't be there as well. But anyway, this doesn't look so good up against the orange. So I think what I should also do is replace some of that orange clay with hardened clay as well as those two complement each other quite well as well. <laughs> so it's coming together very well. One thing I need to do at the moment though is this is obviously the entrance. Then at the opposite side there needs to be a peak like that that goes up. So I need to install something there instead of these two bits. Would that work for a roof? Do you know what? I think it might, but it would look a little bit plain, especially if you saw it from above. So something's going to have to spice that up. But the slope and the height all looks good. Anyway, let's walk into the inside, because I've been thinking about the interiors now, and I think these are just basically going to be a part of the interior walls. So I was putting in this spruce here as the floor, so you'll be at this height. And then I was thinking, wait a minute, we need some lighting in here. So what about throwing in some glowstone just in this little gap? So instead of having um, the brown start at the bottom, there's a little bit of glowstone there. And then the brown could peel over the top like that. And then I feel like these need to do something again. So depending on where the roof is, we could have the darker color perhaps. Hang on, let's put some temporary blocks come across like that. And then that could be like some beams of the internal roof or something like that. However, that's a little bit on the small side at the moment, isn't it? All right, I think this roof is going to work. You can see that I've put in some like clay amongst the spruce, which doesn't really look too great, but it looks better when it's breaking up the spruce. And then this just goes across with slabs. So every other block means that mobs are able to spawn on them. So what we might want to do is run some redstone over that, which you wouldn't be able to see from down below. In fact, I really should have brought some up with me so we could do a little check on that. But let's pop down here and you can see it's looking pretty good, right? I, I think it's really nice, actually. <laughs> it's worked out pretty well. Maybe what it could do with is a little bit of an overhang just at the front, like a tiny bit that comes out. But we're going to leave it alone for now because I'm running out of spruce wood. And somewhere down here I've got some redstone. Do you like my temporary staircase? It's pretty good for uh, getting up and down here, actually. So if we run redstone on here like that, then no mobs are going to spawn on it. It's going to look odd from up above, but not too odd, not terribly odd, you know, because they're just in a line, so it'll probably blend in a little better. And the red isn't too bright. Anyway, if we pop down below, you're never really going to see that, so that's probably the way we'll do that. From this side, ah, 
even from over here you can barely see it so that'll work out just fine if we go to the inside by the way you can now sort of see how it's coming together so this is one block higher than when I showed you a moment ago and I've thrown in some end rods up there and I kind of hoped that they wouldn't be visible but they are so I'm going to leave them there for now and maybe we'll come back later and change them but I really like these beams and end rods on the beams so things don't spawn on there and uh, then we've got this room to deal with. I think what we'll probably do is wrap these around to the front here and then we'll have some sort of walk-in and somewhere around here there'll be some stairs leading up and then it'll be mostly spruce. Let's just skip ahead here. This is what I'm talking about. A nice and simple pattern like that that's easy on the eyes and definitely looks good in this room. Let's just also throw down some extra spruce at the entrance here and put the, uh, the powdered concrete. This is a gorgeous build. I'll hold up my hand and say maybe the roof could be a little bit better, but I love the feel of this as you walk into it. It's terrific. And I've taken the lighting out of the ceiling. I've actually put redstone on top of all those blocks. And it's about ten times better, isn't it? And uh, I just noticed something else that would probably look a little bit better for more consistency. Uh, hi. <laughs> Why can't I? Oh, because there's redstone there now. Of course. Of course. There you go. You can see it all in place. That going down by one block looks just a little bit nicer, I think. Unfortunately, I got no obsidian in my useful box. Well, we're going to have to take a long flight through this wonderful area, actually. It's a pleasure to fly on this server when I have to go get resources, but not today. Not today. We do have obsidian. As I've said before, actually, ender chests are also obsidian if you break them with the right tool. Uh, this, however, is silk touch. And bam, there we go. Some obsidian. Alright, so that's kind of all you need, and I've focused the obsidian through the middle here with two blocks at the front, since you're probably going to be aiming like that. If you do aim to the side a little bit though, there's obsidian down there and there, and I think it's very unlikely you're going to aim into one of these two spots, so here is where we'll put some glowstone. And glowstone has been carefully placed in this room just to light it up just enough. So we've got our, uh, I was about to say sand again, it is used for sand, but our concrete powder color changer thing over here ready to go and over here what we have is a little staircase down leading to the chest in which the items from this will gather so there is a drop with a slab there and that should mean that the items that pop off will just always end up on that slab and make their way into the chest over there and then we've got this little thing over on this side and that is all that this building is going to house well, it took me all of two minutes to tidy up my ender chests there they are an amazing addition to this game Oh, it makes working on projects so much easier. No chests left behind. Everything is with us in our end of chests ready to go. And this is this has turned out to be a pretty cool build, I must say. I'm really impressed with how it has turned out. But anyway, that is going to be it from me this episode of Hermitcraft. I do hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, leave a like on the video. As always, thank you so much for the support on this series. And I will see you in the next episode. Ciao for now. Bye-bye.